Hello, everyone. Welcome to our presentation on Blog Talk Radio on this 13th day of March 2012. Links can be found on our Facebook page called The Musings of Steve and Teresa. And strangely enough, we refer to our efforts as Musings with Steve and Teresa. Today we're addressing earliest memories. We shall provide a call in number in a few minutes, so have a pen and paper handle. Uh, I'm Steve. I'm Teresa Zolko. We're here to enlighten, entertain, and inform about issues we think are important. We want people to think about how positive actions make positive people. And anyone wanting to join our discussion can call us at 347-308-8409. You'll be next in line. Again, that's 347-308-8409. I think you had something to say about your blanket. Oh, yeah. See? The other day, I had to make a blankie, a hanging blankie display for a location. And I had to crack open the beautiful stitching on my blankie to put a rod in the back so I could hang on the wall. And I was thinking, well, why couldn't you do this when the child is done with uh, the blankie? Because eventually, it's like he's going to go in the drawer or the closet or get thrown away. And uh, why not turn it into a wall hanging and then the child can have it all the time. And I made tassels to put on it, but my cat Wiley stole the other one. He's more like a dog than a cat, so. But I just thought I'd bring this in here. I thought it turned out uh, beautiful. Uh, I think it's fantastic, Jerry, and I know that that uh, display went through several uh, ideas before you got this one. That looks like it'll work fine. Yeah, I, it took a while, and because the way I seal up the corners, they're pretty sealed up. So I had to crack one open. I just thought I'd share today. Okay, back to the story. Okay, today we're talking about earliest memories. Uh, some are mine, some are mine, uh, some are ours, and, and there are stories of legend. In, in the research for today's subject, we found the memory specialists are confusing in their conclusions. For example, of uh, infantile amnesia. Very Oh, one of the most common gaps, and the largest gap in you in this memory bank, is the recollections of the first few years of infancy and babyhood. Ever wonder why to struggle to uh, remember to that prior to the age of two? They uh, decided to condition and have identified it as infantile amnesia, a term forged by Sigmund Freud when he commenced his studies of the marble in 1901. There's uh, different parts of the brain that handle memory different differently, but they all work together to make a memory. Uh, they're still uh, trying to figure this out, and they think more of the explanation of infantile amnesia is because you're basically your brain has not grown enough to have the memory facility, the physical memory capability to store the information. There's the processing and storing of the information uh, for Reconstruction occurs later. Basically, the brain isn't done growing. Others say it's environmental, which means that it has to be an event or something has to occur. I think they're right. I think that the brain hasn't has been growing. And also, you don't have enough language skills to uh, process it. Stick it in your memory bank so you can call it up later. If a cloud is only a big white fluffy thing later when it's a cloud, you don't know it, so you don't remember. They don't know what makes our memory because they use too much of the brain. Oh, but they're still looking. Uh, <laughs> that's, uh, that's certainly interesting. Have you got any first memories? Oh, uh, yeah. My earliest one begins in a darkened theater. There's a stage with a giant lighted curtain across it. And I'm with family. I know pops the thing beside me. And I'm excited and I'm standing on the seat so I can see the stage. I know I'm small. I feel small. There's a sense of anticipation in the whole place as everyone's waiting for the show to start. I don't remember an announcer or a host, but two men come out with their faces painted black. I will remember that. And uh, the taller man was complaining about hitting his head on the toilet tank. And uh, he was rubbing his head in the eye. The smaller one said something, and then the entire audience burst into laughter. I didn't understand the joke, but wondered how that man hit his head on the toilet thing. See, remember, he's my talk. Uh, said there was a show the family went to in Portsmouth. He was around two years old. That'll make it 1958. 
favorite my favorite memory, my best memory involves my brothers Mark and Mike. And uh, Mark's five years older than me, Mike's in between us, and then there's Connie, she's two years younger than me. I was around four or five and we lived on Kenny's Lane and uh, the first time they did this was at Easter and they asked us if we wanted to be the Easter Bunny. And of course we wanted to be the Easter Bunny. So they took us into the backyard and one of the brothers had a bunch of carrots and they put it on the corner of the porch and uh, said that we, the Easter Bunny would come but we couldn't watch. So one of them took, they took us around the front porch and so I lost my place. Get excited and can't remember nothing. They said they had to go on the front porch and wait to see if the bunny comes. So we're taken to the front porch and distracted for a few minutes. And then he says, it's okay, let's go check the carrots. So we fly to the backyard. And lo and behold, the carrots are gone. <laughs> Me and Connie are just a day. We can't believe it. I remember looking at her and she's just a little tiny, cute face all happy. And I'm all happy. And uh, I can't believe that. The Easter Bunny got her carrots. My brothers are great. I can still remember the amazing that I felt. And it wasn't until I was much older that I realized what they'd done. When we were out front, only one brother was the distraction. Uh, they did this for the reindeer, too, uh, only once. And it, it was quite effective. It worked the same amazement joy up the little girl. Thanks for the memory, guys. I got some good big brothers. You certainly do. They, they, uh, I, I didn't uh, remember them doing that particularly, but... Uh, uh, they, there were no you, you, around. You, 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 guys, you guys played and fought each other pretty consistently. Uh, I, I had a rule uh, at, at the house that uh, anybody, when a fight started in the room, everybody got away. Yeah. I, I was a trivia judge and jury. And, uh, but we didn't have too many fights. No, I, I remember, they were kicked up there and said, Do you mean that? And Mike said to him, he said, Try it. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, uh, Dad uh, was building a, a fire at the uh, Siderville Boxer Run thing, and uh, he was using tubes uh, about the size of tennis ball containers that had food in them. Mm -hmm. I assumed it was kerosene, coal oil, lamp oil, something like that. But we came home late, it was cold. Uh, I'm laying on the couch with my all shivered up, and uh, Dad was building the fire, and in the hurry, he, he put the uh, containers in there to use this can one, and one of them had about a tablespoon full of, uh, of oil, I guess, and, uh, and uh, when it lit, it went, woof, <laughs> and, and burned, up, burned all the fuzz off his overcoat. Yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, don't remember much more of the, the story. It up the room, poof. <laughs> yeah, it lit up the room, poof. It, it, uh, the, uh, at that same place there, I had a little red wagon. Uh, and, that I parked under the garage in the back. Uh, we've uh, talked about scientific ideas of earliest memories. We've talked about our own research on the web and personal memories of the families and friends and ourselves. And it seems that the scientific and unscientific stories are pretty much the same. None of the recited memories occur before the age of two or three. And, uh, a kind of infant amnesia. Uh, the memories are, seem to be the idea of the Time is a situation. Uh, we uh, want to thank you for listening to our broadcast today. Uh, we hope you'll join us next uh, week on uh, on uh, Tuesday at 2 p.m. with uh, uh, Ancestor Tales. Yeah, more, more Ancestor Tales. Uh, that's the really old people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Teresa. I'm Steve. Thank you for listening. Think positive. Live positive. And be positive. Enjoy. Goodbye. See you next week, people. <laughs>